Okay, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the probability of the means of a sampling distribution of sample means. So with this one, what we have is the mean starting salary for a data analyst is $55,275. A random sample of size 40 is drawn from the population, and we're going to find the following probabilities assuming that the population standard deviation sigma is equal to $7,000. So with this one, I am going to show you how to do this with the TI Inspire graphing calculator. So if you're doing hand calculations, um, make sure to check out my video that shows you how to use the table values. I do the same exact problem with tables. Um, if you're using table values, you do have to use the z-score formula. If you're using the graphing calculator, the graphing calculator allows you to eliminate this. But if you need to show your work, just please make sure that you remember to show your work because I know that um, some teachers and professors require you showing out the work for every single step. Um, so with this one, like I said, I wanted to show you the shortcut of using the TI Inspire to find these probabilities. So what's going to happen with this one is the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the mean of our sampling distribution. And as or according to the central limit theorem, as it says, the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is equal to the mean of the population. So in this case, that would be our mean, the 55,275. The sampling um, distribution, the standard error of the sampling distribution or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Um, so we're going to get this information for sigma from this part right here. It's always the population standard deviation and our sample size is 40. So with this one, the mean of the samples is less than 52,000. So what we're going to do to use this formula is we're looking for the probability that the mean of our sample, so x bar, is less than 52,000. So we're looking for the area to the left of this value. So if you were using a table, you would use the z-score and then you'd find the area to the left of that. Okay, um, for this one, like I said, I'm going to use the graphing calculator. So we're gonna find normal CDF in our calculator and I'll show you in just one second how to do that. And what we're going to do, the parameters that we have to put in is we have to put in our lower value, our upper value, our mean, and our standard deviation. So in this case, because of the fact that we are dealing with a sampling distribution, we would use the mu sub x bar, which is really just mu. And then we have to use this part right here. So we have to plug in sigma divided by the square root of our sample size. So it's very important that you use this and not just the 7,000. I'll show you the difference in one second. Okay, um, so for this one, anytime you're going to the left, your lower is going to be negative one E99. Your upper is going to be the stopping point, which in this case is the 52,000. The mean of our sampling distribution of our sample means is equal to the mean of the population, so the 55,275. And then our standard error, remember, is equal to the standard deviation, which is 7,000, divided by the square root of 40. So this is what we're going to plug into our calculator. So let's go ahead and grab our calculator. And I'm going to just add a calculator screen. So from the home menu or from wherever you are, just add a calculator screen. And what you're going to do is you're going to hit Menu, and you are going to go to Statistics. And under here, you're going to look for the statistics distribution. So we're going to go to option five. And for this one, we're going to go to option two, which is normal CDF. So again, that was menu. And then we went to statistics. And then we went to normal CDF. And I'll show you again. Um, for this one, you can leave it as the negative nine E99. Um, if you have a newer um, Inspire calculator, this may default to negative infinity. I've heard that that is there. Um, I have a much older edition, so the negative 9E999 is fine. You could also put in negative 1E99. Um, that's the lowest that my TI-84 allows me to use, and so that's just kind of what I have in there as what I normally write down for my students. But I'm going to leave it as the negative 9E99. It just means negative 9 with 999 zeros behind it, which is basically negative infinity. My upper bound is going to be the 52,000 that we talked about. Um, the mean, remember, is the mean of our population, which is the 55,275. And this part right here, remember that we do have to put in 7,000 divided by 
the square root of 40. It is very important that you do close the parenthesis here and that you put in the divided by square root of 40. I will show you really quickly the difference of what happens if you forget to put that in. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit enter and okay. And notice it plugs this value in and this is our probability right here, the 0 0.0015. Um, just to show you what would have happened and just to kind of recap how to plug this in, remember we did menu. Option six, statistics. Option five, distributions. And then option two, normal CDF. Um, if you plug this in incorrectly, so with this one, remember that we're stopping at the 52,000. And then the 55,275. Divided by seven, or the, let's say that we forgot um, to put the square root of n to show you how much of a difference that makes. You may not think it's a big difference, but it really is. Notice our probability is 0 0.3199. So this is the probability of a single data analyst having a salary that's below 52,000. So that's pretty likely to happen. About 32% of the time, a single person will have a salary that's below 52,000. But if you're talking about data analysts and you're talking about a sample of size 40, in the probability of that sample having a mean that is below 52,000, so if I took to get all 40 people, took their salaries, add them up, divide by 40, and got the mean, the probability of them being less than 52,000 is only 0.15%. So that's not very likely. So it is important that you make sure that you do um, put it in correctly. Okay. Um, so for this one, we would just write down, and this is going to be approximately 0 0.0015. And in statistics, this is known as an unusual value. So this is considered unusual. This is not typical. This is outside of what you would expect to see. While it can happen, just like you can win the lottery, it's not very likely to happen. Um, so if you see something like this, you start to question whether the mean really is 55,275 like it's been reported. Okay. Um, so as far as interpreting this, you can put it, the probability is, you can put approximately, you could put it as a decimal, you can put it as a percentage. I'm just going to put it as a decimal, and we could say approximately 0.15% of samples of size 40 um, of data analysts will have a mean salary less than $52,000. So it's very, very unlikely to see this happen. While it could happen, when you start seeing things like this, you start to question whether the mean is really as it was reported. Okay, so moving on to the next one, I'm not going to do the interpretation. I'm going to try to get through these last two a little bit more quickly, but I did want to show you um, how to find the probabilities. For this one, what we're going to do is we're looking for the probability that our sample mean is between 54,000 and $57,000. Okay, so for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna still do the same thing, the normal CDF, but this time our lower is gonna be 54,000. Our upper is going to be the 57,000. Our mean is still the same thing, the 55,275 and our standard deviation is still going to be the seven, or the standard error is still going to be the 7,000 divided by the square root of 40. So we're still going to plug it in essentially the same thing, same way as far as these two go, but we're going to change our lower and our upper. Okay, so let me grab my calculator. And if you wanted to, what you could do is you could go up and grab this so you don't have to go through all of those steps again and then just kind of go over and delete. Um, in this one, it's probably faster just to start over again, but I can just type in the 54,000, um, make sure to separate it with a comma, and then stop at the 57,000, 
and then hit enter. So you can do it that way. In this case, it's probably easier because the Inspire does not store the last values that you put in. In the 84, it stores the last one, so it's more cumbersome. Um, but this would be our probability that 40 people will have an average salary between 54,000 and 57,000. Okay, um, this is extremely likely to happen. This is very likely because it occurs 81.58% of the time if I round it or put it as a percentage. Um, so approximately 81.58% of samples of size 40 selected from data analysts will have a salary that is between 54,000 and 57,000. The average, not individually, but the average salary. And then the last one that I'm going to do with you is we're going to look for the probability that our sample mean is greater than $57,000. Okay, um, so for when you're dealing with greater, you're going to still start it the same way, the normal CDF, but this time our lower is going to be the $57,000. The upper is going to be the 1E99. You can default to the 9E999. This calculator does go more. Um, some calculators do have the infinity button, so you can use infinity here. Um, all the 1E99 represents is infinity. Um, and then I would put in my mean of my um, population, which is the 55,275. Then we would put in our standard error of our sampling distribution, which is the 7,000 divided by the square root of n. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab this one, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to change this part here. And I'm going to change this one to the 57,000, because we're looking for greater than 57,000. Okay. And then I'm just going to put one, the EE is right here next to the A, so if you're looking for that. Um, and then I'm just going to hit enter, and I get 0 0.50596 approximately. So approximately 5.96% of the time, we will see a sample of size 40 selected from data analysts to have a mean salary that is greater than 57,000. Well, and while this is not extremely likely to happen, um, typically the cutoff is 5%, so if it's more than 5%, it's not considered unusual. This is right at that threshold of it could be unusual, it could be um, very acceptable to happen. So this is right there at the line where the first one that we did was extremely unusual to happen. This one was very, very likely to happen. And then this one is just kind of likely, it's kind of on the border of whether it's unusual or not unusual, depending upon what your threshold is. And one thing I did want to point out on this is if you are required to show work, um, then you do want to use the formula the z equals x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n and convert it to a z score. If you use rounded z scores, your answers will be slightly different. So if you're using table values, you will get slightly different answers. Um, it's very slight on the between and the greater than, um, but a lot of times it's very, very close. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.